Hello, everyone. Welcome back to uh, Banner Cloud Bootcamp 2020. Uh, we'll continue with the Shopify um, programming with the e-commerce we're doing. Uh, today, we'll be looking at SNP cards. Um, and Mr. Zishan Hanif will continue uh, with the SNP card program. Do you guys want to add anything before we get into it? Yes. Yes. I just wanted to ask Zishan a couple of questions. Yes. Zishan, can you tell us something about yourself? How long have you been program? Ah, uh, it's around. I have started programming in 2001. How old were you then? Maybe around 18 or 19. It's a, it has been a long journey, but yes. I think the, uh, but the dividend has uh, paid off. Uh, I, yes. I'll tell you honestly, there's no way. Jose, I can uh, um, do coding live like you and Daniel and Adil do. Uh, I believe because I have confidence in myself that if I uh, take about three times what time you take and Daniel take, then I can code better. But given your time, you you guys are also always going to win. <laughs> <laughs> and the fact is that I'm much younger than you and still you guys beat me. So there, there is something in which we can try. <laughs> we can try, not exactly, but we can try. Uh, okay, okay. Let's, uh, Rishan, let's get started. And whenever um, Dania or Adil want to jump in, they can jump in and um, uh, give you. Uh, let's uh, develop a shopping cart. Yeah. Shopping cart, the easy way. In yes. the next class, we will do it the more difficult and customizable way. But this one is the easy way. Yes. Just go ahead, Rishan. Thank you so much. Okay. So, first of all, uh, uh, what we need to understand that building an e-commerce website or web application is in a task or a difficult task in itself. So, you need to implement how you will be using uh, uh, displaying products and how all information will be displayed and managed and how user will be seeing products and related products and everything managing card of a e card e shopping application is in itself a task or a project because if you are talking about managing a card that means you add something in a, in your card user refresh that that information should be there you need to apply discounts you need to see that if user uh, did not complete the uh, card uh, management uh, uh, checkout process and left the screen and user come back a letter. So you need to display that information. You need to manage uh, that information on the server so that you display orders, how many products have been purchased, how many orders that particular user has, been, has done, and what, what is the status of order. All these information needs to be managed quite well and if you are trying to do it yourself, that will require quite a lot of work just to manage a card where user add something into the card, user go to the checkout, user send the uh, make the payment, and then you receive order on your server. Then you need to process it. You need to uh, send the update. You need to update the status of order. All those things need to be done by you, and it will be hell of a task. Snip card is doing that portion of your tasks by itself and you do not have to manage all those things by yourself. So let me share my screen first and then I'll start showing you what a SNP card is and how we'll be using. So first uh, thing first in our e-commerce repository, we have a project to get the SNP card. We have a three articles over there. Other two are just explaining, so you guys can review that. I'll be focusing on the one which is showing how you can use a SNP card in your application. But for that, before that, let me go to snipcard.com. And uh, I guess I'm logged in at this moment, so let me log out first. So once you are on snipcard.com, you need to register yourself. You need to provide your email address. They will verify your email address. And they will show you a form in which they will ask your details, uh, all the details, uh, your company name, and all those things will be required. And then you will take you will be taken to a dashboard page, which I'll show you. 
once you are done with the uh, sign up you will see this dashboard this dashboard has few information let's say how many orders have been uh, created during a particular time period let's say this time period is shown from 7th october to 11th or 7th november so it's past one month's data so it says in past one month you have received eight orders sales every sale how many new customers you have received shipping uh, if you have collected a shipping cost any campaigns average customer value so you can just imagine in these info managing a, this particular page itself and uh, at, uh, calculating all those things will require itself in a uh, uh, project so you can see list of completed orders these are i just created here you can see list of orders whatever orders have been placed and if you go to the status of order you can see a particular order and you can change the status what what's the status this order is in subscription subscription like if you are selling a subscription to a abandoned card the most uh, important which i i was explaining that user come to your site click the checkout and try to fill something and there, there might be an error a payment is not completed so payment is not completed but what snip card is doing is snip card is holding that information so you can if you come is use if your user come back again so uh, snip card can show the information to the user all the customers discounts i'll show you the dis how discounts works products the important thing is snip card is not a content management server it's snip card is not holding your products so that you can fetch the products and display to the customer and uh, ask to buy product from this snip card is not for that the snip card is just your order management system your cart management system so you do not you will not be adding product here but whenever you sell something snip card hold that information in the list of product and then can show you that which product has been sold how many of time what is the revenue of a particular product the snip card can show you all these things that's the one side <laughs> there is another side so there is a snip card <laughs> just to manage a card there are too many things which need require let's say payment gateways you can integrate your payment gateway i try to uh, connect my stripe account but the problem is uh, they require active active stripe account so i was not able to do that because i have not active stripe account for that i need an account in us texas shipping you can manage your shipping from here and you can provide what will be the fees you can integrate others let's say you can integrate with fedex so if you have a contact with fedex you can integrate so web hooks domains i'll show you the, these two later on order invoices how you can customize so too many things just to manage a card so you do not realize once you are trying to uh, identify i need to manage a shopping card or i need to create a e-commerce site but when you see these things then you understand that these things are very very uh, needy uh, you need these things to be uh, handled just to know your card management okay so what i'm going to do is uh, we have uh, our template project as usual so just a basic template structure it does not have anything else just in the hello world and we will follow initially this article and then will move on so uh, on gatsby page you can see in this art link we have this uh, article it shows you that to access snipcard because definitely with whichever library you are using you need a plugin or you need a module so that you can use that module inside your application so gatsby provide gatsby plugin snipcard that's an old gatsby has uh, upgraded the snipcard to version 3 so we'll be using that one and you can do that by searching snipcard i'll show you create a snipcard account you need an api key now what you need to do is what you need to understand you create your product page whatever way you want you will fetching your data from the phone db mongo db or uh, your server is on heroku or from a contentful server wherever your data is your product list is just fetch from there snip card is not managing that once you have the data displayed what snip card where snip card jumps in is 
on the checkout button you can apply a few things which is handled by this gift card so once you have that information on the button you can add snip card add item because of this class this button can open a checkout from this snip card data item dot id you will provide the id of your product you will provide the price of your product you will provide the url this url is very important i'll show you how uh, snip card need to verify your product so this url is important the name of a product and other information also requires if you need a custom information size uh, options so i'll show you them so let's move on uh, to this and we'll see how it works so first of all what we need to do is we need to add uh, uh, a snip card Three instead of snip card, I'll, we need snip card three. So you can search from here. So we have this snip card three. Just install it. Meanwhile, it's installing. What we need to do is we need to configure this inside our uh, uh, Gatsby config file so that we need Gatsby resolver and then API key. So your uh, what you say, snip card uh, key. You it, it will require your snip card key, which is publishable key. So I'll copy this over and here. Okay, so I need a key. So what I'll do is I'll add a .env file. Mm -hmm. And I'll need .env to load the environment variable. And here we will use process dot env dot secret key. We will be getting this secret key for that. We'll go to the our dashboard again and here we have api keys so in api uh, you will have you have two menus what left side on, and on the right side for left side menu it's more of a order management and everything and for the light side menu is how you configure your uh, shopping cart so here we have our api keys inside this we have this public test api key so you can copy this test api key and paste it over here then um yes now what i'll do is just go to the page and Now here, I'm at this moment, I'm not adding the product information or something. I'm just adding a button. 
and I'm assuming that there is a product on which this button will be clicked, but the most important part is the button. Check out. So let me start the server as well, the Netlify dev as well. Here. <coughs> so, okay, so we have a checkout button, and once we click on this, we need to see a uh, checkout of Snip card. So, for that. I'll go to the code and now we need to add few properties which is required by snip card. What are those properties? As you can see, we need to add first a class snip card add item. Then data item ID price URL. So let's say let's say my ID is Mm. Normal shoe, let's say, and price, let's say, twenty-five dollar. At this moment, default currency is dollar, so you do not have to worry about. But you can change that description. And we need URL. I'll show you what URL does at this moment. I'm using this slash, but this URL is very important. So we need an image as well. So I'll, what I'll do is. I don't think this one will work properly. Let's try this one. Okay. So press the URL for this and we can say anything. Let's say Now, if I'll go to browser, there is no change. There's a simple button. There is nothing because all this information has been added in a property. And these property, uh, for you to understand that in HTML elements, you can add whatever property you want. So you can add any kind of property on your HTML element. And that's how a snippet is playing with this element. So this button has few data elements. And once you click the button snip card open up its checkout its checkout form you can see uh, let me just a moment i was playing with some other information that's why it's shown over here so once i click the checkout button it shows image formal shoe description quantity price everything and a checkout button i can increase the quantity it will increase the price and then it has a promo code so i'll show you the discount code as well and you click the checkout button so it will show you the billing at this moment it's not asking the detail 
but that's will the that's how the uh, form will be and then you can select anything okay uh the shipping method is currently no shipping method is available uh just a moment <clears throat> there, uh, there was some kind of location issue, but it just got resolved. So you do not have to worry about the shipping. It's working with the shipping. Okay, so for the payment, it will ask the card. I'll add the card and click the place order. This will not work because Order needs to be shipped, but no shipping. It's showing the shipping error. Otherwise, it needs to show the product verification error. So I'll have to. Shipping method could not be validated. The selected shipping rate might be changing. I just click. I might click on something in the shipping. Okay. To show you guys, I just uh, enabled the shipping. That's why it's causing the problem. So I'm disabling the shipping at this moment. Uh, and then go back to my card. Check out. There's a five. I'll reduce this. Check out. Now it's going to the directly payment because I already filled the personal information. Place the order. Okay. Now that's the important point. Product crawler error. The defined product price don't match the price in card product could not be found. The problem is what a snip card says, what if user comes to my page and change the price inside from this element and then click the uh, button let's say if i go to this and change the information inside this properties make it 10 and then try to hit the checkout button so that will be problem for snip card and uh, as a vendor as well uh, it's uh, still 10 yes it's still 10 you see it shows 10 and that's the incorrect price so what a snip card does is when you hit the checkout button a snip card send a request to your website on a particular page where this product is already listed and this button is already over there so for that you need to provide a url where your product is already listed so that the snip card crawl your page verify the information if information is correct then a snip card will say that a product is fine and then it will go to the proceed to the checkout for that what we need to do is uh, we cannot do this verification while keeping the staying on the local host so we need to deploy our product uh, our, this uh, application and also we need to provide that URL the domain URL inside our domain host here so let, let's go to deployment first Get and configure new site. Should be same site name. Choose anything. Publish directory. Okay, I just forgot to add the connectify.uml file. I'll add it later. Okay, so it's been deployed. Let me 
type the netlify file so for the safe side it is not needed for now Function is not required at this moment, so leave it. Okay, so our this application is deployed. Let me go to the Netlify side. So this is where we have our application. I'll copy the URL and paste it inside the domain. Save it. You can see it has it has uh, automatically removed the HTTPS. So we have a site, a domain deployed a place over here. Our page is not showing the proper details. So let me build the application and deploy it again. Once it is deployed, uh, we have a page at the Netlify server which contains the uh, uh, product ID and the but all the information. So we can run it from the locally because it will be verifying on the live server. So we do not have to worry about. But uh, let me sh just show you. Here we have the checkout button, and now on this checkout button, if I click this, it will show me the product, and I'll. Click the checkout. Continue payment. Preparing the payment with using test information. Place the order. Now it's worked fine. Our order is completed. Why? Because on this uh, domain, the URL which we have posted here, this has. So once we click the checkout, it sends the request to the domain. And we have, what we have set over here, we have set slash. That means main root URL, root of your domain. So it's uh, send the request at the root of our domain and crawl this particular page. And this per page has this element, which contains a class name Snipcard add item. So it gets uh, Snipcard scroller find, try to find but uh, element which has a Snipcard add item and then identify properties from them. So this is a live server, so uh, user can change the value from the client by editing the page, but it, user cannot change the, uh, the page already deployed on the server. So that's how it's verified. Okay. And the good thing is, once this page is here, what I can do is I can test now continuously on my local host. Let me start the server. Now I'm in localhost. Let me click the checkout button. So we have I need to delete this. Check out increase check out button. Yeah, 
ID card information. Place the order. <clears throat> okay. Now the order is done at the local side as well. But what it does is it's trying to send request on the server. Okay. And the server is already defined in the domain. So it's sending the request on this domain URL. Let's go to the dashboard and see what we have here. We see the orders upgraded to 10 orders. It previously it was at. And we can see orders. And here are two orders which we have created just now. You can see SNIP order number SNIP 1010. So SNIP 1010, it will show you the complete detail of an order, what type of element it is, quantity, price, total, billing information, payment, shipping information. We can set up a web book. I'll show you in a moment so web book. And the comment, if you add a particular comment, it will send email to the user if there is an, a, something change. So you can see this uh, abandoned card customers you can see a product that's the product which is added a moment so you can see snp 10 snp 1009 snp 1010 these two orders are done for this particular product so once you add a new view uh, order is being created for a new product it will be available here so let me revise this and then i'll uh, move forward First of all, you need to create an account on Snipkart. You need to set up your shop. You just add all the information and then you are good to go. Then in your application, you need a Gatsby plugin so that you can configure your Snipkart. So for that, you need to add this. You need a Snipkart key, which is available here in your API keys. And then, uh, you can uh, Zishan, if you wanted your own key, this was not a testing key. Where will you get it? Uh, that's the here API secret key. Mm -hmm. But this this is the public key, which is uh, 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 shareable. You don't have to worry about it. That's what they say. The public API key you need to add on your website to include Snipkart JS file. So that's mm -hmm. the public key, and you do not have to. A secret key will be required when you need to call the APIs. Mm -hmm. So when you, you will be calling the API, then you will be secret key. Otherwise, you can go with mm -hmm. this key and there is no issue. It's shareable. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then uh, you need to, the main thing is the data properties of a snip card. There is nothing else just to add data, item ID, price, and all these things. And you will see the uh, uh, checkout page by yourself what you can do more with this properties is you can create a custom property in which you need to provide let's say you are buying as i have mentioned the shoe here so if you are trying to buy shoe you need to specify the size which size of a shoe you need to buy so what you can do is just go to here and you can customize whatever uh, data you want so just call it item dash custom one so you are saying you are creating first custom property name. I am naming it size. It added item. So new card is doing all the uh, mapping. One dash options. So let's say um, say eight. Vishal, I don't understand. How does it open it oh, when you click the button? How does mm -hmm. it open the page? You have not uh, defined the click button. <laughs> yeah, that's 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 why I was saying that the interesting part is Snipkart try to find a item which has Snipkart add item property on it. So mm -hmm. if, if your page has a Snipkart add item property, Snipkart applies uh, because because of this configuration, Snipkart's JavaScript uh, library is in your project. So part of your project. So when, once your page has this class, that means Snipkart can find it and Snipkart applies over it once your project is built. 
then when you click on this button snipcard js try to find this button and if this button is in a snipcards button then it's open the checkout uh, form and all, based on all these properties it show you the uh, page but how does when you click the button mm -hmm. how does it connect to the snipcard code snipcard javascript it's uh, snipcard javascript is your part of your project based no, no, on I understand, I, I understand that based on your plugin it is part mm -hmm. of the project so that means any time you click any button no the button which has this class snipcard add item so if i if i create a button which does not have this class that will not do anything yeah i understand that but mm -hmm. what i'm saying is how does it uh, it must scan for every button on yeah, the whole side uh, what snipcard is doing snipcards uh, once the application is being built snipcards scan try to find all the item which has this class and then apply its javascript it's a very simple that uh, once the application is being loaded you can add event based on class so uh, it might be doing uh, add dot add event listener on this class so that's why that's how it's applying on the buttons mm -hmm. or any element you don't need to be a button you don't need to be a button it can be a div but whenever you click on this div it will work this way mm -hmm. Okay. So the now we have a custom name and these properties. So what we can do is uh, here. Click the checkout. And now I have the size. It is not showing the options. Into this custom one. Okay, so you can see you can select the options, whatever size you want to buy, and another interesting thing: everything is being done in this. You want to be a different price for this, so plus twenty or plus five is enough. <laughs> and plus 10 so if you have selected size 8 it's 25 when you select the 9 it will change the price to 30 if you select the size 10 it will change price to 35 so base price is 25 you are saying plus 5 so user select the uh, size 9 it will increase the price so you can customize this as well and this is your area you can do whatever property you want to specify and all these information will be available inside your order custom to name info let's say it's just info so it will show you the text box You can see as well. And if you make it uh, custom to type box, so it will show you check box. So you can customize based on this and every information will be available here about the, the way you want to manage it. So, okay, now uh, let me uh, just show the promo code then I'll show you the list of products. Uh, in the promo code, we just, it's quite simple if you want to manage your discounts, they have given complete detail how you can do that. So let me first, uh, Click the create discount, uh, name it, let's say, okay, December discount. It will expire on 30th November. 
and maximum usage if i can say maximum usage one that means it will be applied only once and second time it will not work currency or you can say let's say you can apply this at five times so single person can apply it five times choose what discount will do now this is important so you want to apply discount on the whole card as a uh, dollar value as a percentage what you want to do so prefix amount will be deducted if you say prefix amount then you need to specify amount that this amount should be deducted from your order if you say percentage so you need to specify that 10 percent should be discount you have multiple options how you want to apply uh, what type of uh, discount you want to apply so let's say i'm saying a 10 percent discount let's keep it 10 percent discount and how this discount will be applied user will add manually or a particular product is being added if you select a product then you need to specify the product id that this if this discount is for that particular id let me just go for the manually entered code i'll say um for ir code keep it all capital just for the for ir code and save it it's now saved and we have this discount over here and then i'll go I'll, i do not have to do anything in the uh, code just go to your working application click the checkout and let's say i'm saying to product and then pick the discount code discount code is for ir code so we can market our code as companies do apply this code is applied and you can see five dollar discount as a 10 percent and now you can go to the checkout select your address okay so you can see card summary it also showing the discount and everything you can go to your dashboard go to orders and you can see new order and this order also specify the size as you can see info because it's a checkbox so it's say true or false whatever so all the additional information are also available here you can see the information of discount subtotal everything and if I try to buy with the same discount, apply same discount again. We'll show you promo is not available. Now managing only this thing is also a task in itself that you need to uh, manage all these things you by yourself. So that's also being done by this new card. And you, have, what have, what have you done? You have just added few properties into your application everything is managed by the snip card so that's quite easy for you to work with. Do, do you charge for this component yeah they charge two percent for transaction i think that is too much because you are going to pay two two and a half percent for the credit card and two percent for the uh, they charge two percent per transaction Mm -hmm. and they give you up uh, basically the uh, facilities are too much if you are just focusing uh shopping cart then it seems to be a too much uh, otherwise you can integrate your uh, shipping management your tax collection your orders your customers everything it, if if you see this dashboard they are giving you a full flesh service of your complete order management based on that uh 
uh, it's uh, can be a good facility if you do all these uh, like uh, uh, what you say uh, shipping tax management and all payment gateway you can integrate stripe over here so payments will go to the stripe because uh, snipcard is not taking the price for itself uh, you can you will connect the stripe then all your price directly go to the stripe as well but uh, and that's uh, easy uh, easy for us so directly just, just to understand uh, mm -hmm. the stripe is the payment gateway which processes the credit card or whatever Yes. And uh, the SNP card basically is the, your shopping card and uh, taxation and other issues. So yeah. therefore, combined, you will pay about 2.5% for uh, Stripe. Uh, Stripe and 2% for SNP card. That is about 4.5 Four. to 5%. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm. So that seems to be a costly uh, if you, if you can manage it. But for small companies, uh, uh, it is okay because you don't have to hire developers and all that things. Yeah, that's that's what that's what the uh, interesting part is, Be, because you are applying few properties and you have a complete cart management application at your service. So the and uh, quite definitely being tested and being used and properly tested application so that's why it's quite uh, good but if you are creating your own a big e-commerce application like amazon and aliexpress and all them they can create your uh, the their what you say uh, order shopping cart by themselves i'll show you the api as well because once you uh, implement the uh, this page or the checkout then you need to show orders to your customer so you can fetch the orders for, with the API as well. So uh, let me first uh, clear uh, something that uh, we are creating this button. So we'll be fetching data from our server or anywhere. So I'm showing uh, uh, how we'll display products. And for that, what I'll use, I'll do is uh, we have uh, created product list in our first project in the shopping uh, in our uh, uh, e-commerce projects the first project we created and we fetched we had fetched data from the stripe so i am not showing all the details how we did for that you can see our uh, 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 first class of e-commerce uh, you will see all the details what i'll do is i'll just copy that code so that you can see list of product and then we click that product and this product will be available for the uh, purchase so what i'll do is first we need to go and go to the stripe so uh, i have already created these products on the stripe in our first class so you can contact with contentful you can contact with phone db anything you need to connect for fetching the products so these are the products i had created in our first class to display uh, on, on our shopping cart and we use this code to fetch the shop, uh, stripe product from the stripe so i'll copy this configuration um, this part will be a copy paste because i'm i'm trying to display the products and we need to install this stripe Then what we need is we need a product list page where we are showing uh, this. So we were displaying the this product details. We were fetching from the GraphQL using uh, base, using the GraphQL. We were fetching from the uh, Stripe. So uh, the old whole detail for this is uh, ex uh, available in our pre previous to previous class. So you do not have to worry about it. I'll just copy all this information here. And I'll create page. In pages, I'll create products.js. Name it products. 
So everything will remain the same, the Stripe key, because it's already exists in my Stripe key. It's fetching the products from my Stripe account, ID, active currency, product, ID, name, image, and it's trying to display these products over here. What we need to do is I just need to remove this redirect to checkout. I'll remove this redirect to checkout, and it will not be doing anything related to the click. Let me show you this code first, and then we'll. I need to install this as well in Stripe JS. Game installed as a save and then uh, why it's not working. Let's um, game install. So, my terminal in uh, Visual Studio Code is causing some problems, so that's why I'm trying to install a normal terminal. So no stripe secret key found. Okay, oh, stripe secret key is not available. So I need to add this secret key in .env file. And uh, okay, so I need to get the secret key from here. Okay, it's available in the code, previous code as well. So I'll pick from the previous code. Yesterday, and try again. <clears throat> so we have this page and we'll say products now we have <clears throat> three products each product has a checkout button and at this moment it will not do anything but we need to integrate our snip card here so i'll go to this products page and on this checkout button, I'll name it add to card. And here we need few properties. For now, let me just add 
copy them here and then we'll change them. So we need an ID. So for this ID, we are receiving ID from our Stripe product. I'll use this ID. You need to understand that you will be receiving data from any server and that data you need to specify in your snip card element which will be working as your checkout button or add to cart for button and i'll copy the name unit amount which is price description we do not have at this moment for the product, what we have to do is we have to specify our application URL and then we need to also deploy it. products. Let it fetch from there. One more thing. So we have inside this drive, we have a description. Yes, so we need to call this description in our query. So we can receive description as well, and then we'll make it so that's uh, the data we have received, and we need to deploy this application as well because now this. Uh, as Snipcard needs to verify your product, your element should be in your page. And we do not, we have not uh, deployed this application yet. So at this moment, there is no product page. So validation of a Snipcard will fail. So let me just show you the page. Add to cart. So now you can see water bottle and there is no image okay i have not updated the image url so we have image as well so we do not i'm mentioning again that all this information how you we are getting this product and everything is in our in our first class of e-commerce Okay, so add to cart. I placed it on the wrong location. Add to cart. Now you can see water bottle. You can increase the price continue shopping and I'll add this shoe and you can see these two total costing is 8,000 but we are testing it so we do not have to worry about it okay so it will fail so instead of going this way let me deploy this first so that we can verify this as well <clears throat> there is an error okay um, the Error must be because of the keys I have provided and they are not available at the Netlify, so I need to add those keys into Netlify. but I'm building at the local application and then deploying it so it might not uh, fail now. 
Okay. Yes, yes, so we have a product page. Why it does not fail and why we not, do not need to provide the environment variable because I built the application and uh, using my terminal and then deploying manually. If we are we'll be using directly connecting with the grid, then we need those keys in Netlify environment variable as well. So I'll go to this card page. We do, we do not have to worry about from here. We can do this from here as well because it's now fine with it. So up. Uh, I just forgot. I we can add a button for the checkout. So directly we go to checkout instead of every time we click on the product page. I'll show you this one, that one also. And click on the checkout. Continue payment. Is the order order is successful and we can go on our product page and we can see our orders that's the eight thousand dollar order we have you can see two products product id all the information available yeah okay <clears throat> now what we need to do is uh we you must follow the documentation keep the documentation with your with you because this documentation is very there are too many pages let me close them it will give you all the details how you need to set up but this is based on uh, your normal html js setup so you can set up by using this uh, link url you do not have to do this for that you have this gatsby plugin here you can see it showing you all the possibilities how you need to display your product and there is an other card summary so you you must go through this uh, documentation it's quite handy and helpful so what you can do is you can create a checkout button in your application just by one button let me see. and as you can see in e-commerce application on your main page you see an icon at the left, top left or top right and it shows you how many items in your cart so that's what if you create this spend and give it a class snip chart snip card item count so it will show you how many items are in your cart snip card total price it will show you how what what is the total cost of your card so you can just let me So now on my home page, I need to start the server. You can see, uh, let me just add another PR here. Checkout button, the total item, and now you, you can use icons and everything, but you have this, when I'll click on this, it will open the checkout and it 
So at this moment, there is nothing in our cart, so it is showing cart is empty. So what we can do is click this checkout button, and there is a product inside our uh, cart. Go continue and go to now. You can see it says there is the one item in your cart. Cost is total twenty five. Click the checkout button. It will just show the uh, cart. It will not add anything into the cart. So if I'll go to my products page, not product list, products. And add a water bottle inside it. Continue shopping. Go to home page. We can add in the header so we, the information will be available on all the pages. Now you can see two items in your cart. Total cost is $1,525. And when I'll click this checkout button, so uh, when you create a shopping cart application or e commerce application, you always see an icon at the top. And whenever you click on it, you can go to directly a checkout instead of clicking every time on the uh, add product button so you can manage this uh, and definitely I, I have not managed the ui at this moment but you can do whatever you want just you what you need to do is you need to add button which call which must have a class snipcart checkout so that's a checkout button so snipcards js apply event on it and whenever you click on this button it will show you the checkout card snipcart item count with whichever element has this class it will show the count of an item in this span or div whatever you have and that's a snipcart total price so it will show you the total price so whenever you are you are adding something you can uh, see the count in total every time you and you can place that information on in your header so it will always display how many products in your cart and whatever the price uh, total is which will be charged to you so that's how you can add all these information in your page and you can manage your page what in whatever style you want mm -hmm. that's the page and you can uh create a beautiful ui out of it okay so uh next uh what we need to do is that's the whole uh the checkout the how you add gatsby plugin in your application then how you show your products just whichever button will work for the add to checkout needs to have these mandatory properties so that they dis display it properly and then you can use this custom information whatever information you are using and you as you can see uh, assuming this product data is coming from any of the server and we are displaying that information and on the button which will be adding element to the card that's information we need to provide in our html page and this url is very important will uh, whatever url it is uh, Snipcard will crawl that page and try to find data item ID which we are submitting. So that should be over there. So it's a security Snipcard has implemented. So then uh, somebody cannot change any information at locally and submit anything else. So Snipcard is managing this. We do not have to worry about it. Now, the important thing is once your checkout is done, your order has been placed you need to be informed by snipcart so that your server receive information and you can, you need to add some information in your database or whatever place you want so for that snipcart gives you the uh, webhook so you can create your webhook and paste url over here so what i'll do is um we'll create a function netlify function and terminal i don't know if this terminal is still causing a problem let's see <clears throat> um netlify In the functions create <coughs> a 
पेमेंट हुक यूजिंग द डिफॉल्ट सो वी हैव दिस हुक एट दिस मोमेंट एंड सो स्निप कार्ड विल कॉल दिस वेब हुक सो व्हाट वी नीड टू डू इज वी नीड टू वट एवर डेटा विल बी रिसीविंग विल बी अवेलेबल इन साइड body so i'll parse it json dot parse even dot body even dot body whenever users send any data from client to your netify function that data is available in even dot body so that body is stringify so we need to parse it so we'll available we will have this function here and once we have it we need to deploy this as well because it will go to the server so for that i'll again i need to deploy build Deploy and so we will have this hook URL. So what we can do is in our site, this will be the URL for our main site. I'll copy this in dashboard web hook URL, and our function will be on dot netlify as we know it. Functions slash the name of your hook. payment hook so that will be the url of our function so whoever want to call this function if it's not web hook any if you create a netlify function so it available on your url slash netlify slash function slash name of the function so we'll save this it's saved and we are good to go let's go to the start the server again because it's stop we can test it over the here as well do not have to do it locally but once you are deployed you can test on your uh, deployed application or your on your local host as well wherever you want to use for testing purpose okay so we have this just we do not add any have to add anything just click on the checkout button and we have all this information go to the checkout what we will see is that's important i just forgot to mention in the function we do not have function over here yes we have function payment we'll see log here because it's a deployed function so whatever will happen in this code the logs that will available here to us and we'll see log in snip card as well so let's go back to this select the address is the order order is successful let's go to the function okay yes now we have logs you can see data which i have mentioned over here and complete information of an order so you can see content name mode all this information billing information the person name of a person address and then billing address shipping address all the information required and also there is one thing it should be there items 
something is missing. There should be a property name items which contains all your products. So let's go to dashboard and refresh this webhook page. So we can see this order complete webhook. You click it and it will show you the uh, the webhook has requested and then whatever data sent by the snip card and whatever the response we uh, receive so we receive res this response and this is the hello world which our server sent to the snip card and what the snip card has sent discount items payment schedule everything snip card has sent lot lot of things i don't know why everything was not available here let me refresh it one more time i think because of the length of the data it is cut it off netlify uh maybe but i have seen this i i have tested this so there was a uh, information related to the item uh -huh. so uh anyways uh, this uh, this should be available here so you have an order and inside you have a two three or four products so this the object ha contains everything all the details and items so you can see products here as well so uh, complete information will be available in this object and you can on your server you can extract that information and save it in your database or whatever you want to do with this to manage it so all the card information shipping uh discounts and the order whatever you can see a complete detail over here the list of orders whatever order has been done and you can change the status from here to any status and you also have an api for that so the documentation i told you to be I have this let's say we have an api reference over here so we can call apis so for api you need to call it this way fetch url and then you need to provide headers inside the header you need to provide your secret key now that's the secret key which we will be using from here create name it anything let's say demo create it and you can copy it and whenever you want to fetch something uh, then you provide this information over it and you can fetch list of orders so all the orders will be available to you so this api what what you're going to uh, use for this api is uh, once user purchase something then in the user page you need to display list of orders status of order you need to update the status of order programmatically so you can do these so you can update uh, with these api endpoint you can fetch the order you cannot create the order you fetch the order you can get a uh, particular order you can update the order so that's how you can uh, update the order so once your order has been processed or it's been delivered so you have a, some mobile app and you press that order has been delivered and it's updated your snip card as well so you can do this if if we have time i can show you the api calling as well uh what you say sir? i think it's enough uh, your voice is going out <laughs> you <laughs> no, have, no no no, no. You, you, no, have no been, you have been talking for one hour 10 minutes <laughs> <laughs> i no, think it's uh, still fine it's it is good enough i think it is good enough uh, you have shown everything uh, what needs to be in the next class uh, we will do the custom uh, shopping cart uh, mm -hmm. with the open source toolkit uh, yes. and uh, we will do that in the next class uh, bye bye everyone have a nice day or night thank you so much okay bye guys <laughs>